Good morning and welcome to our program on this Lord's Day morning. I hope that each of you are doing well and I would love to extend an invitation to you to join us in services today at Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will come together this morning at 9 o'clock for Bible study followed by worship at 9.50. We will come together again this evening at 6 o'clock for our evening worship service and then we gather on Wednesday evenings also at 6 o'clock for midweek Bible study. We would love for you to come and join us for any or all of these upcoming services. Last week we began looking at a series of lessons dealing with the evidence for the existence of God. And in concluding that lesson last week, I mentioned that I was going to share some arguments that offer proof for the existence of God. I mentioned that when I use this term proof, I don't mean scientific proof, but proof from logic. These arguments are something that I feel every young person needs to hear and examine for themselves. And we talked a little bit about the first argument, which is known as the cosmological argument. And this argument states that every creation must have a creator. And I shared some evidence with you that goes along with this view. And we concluded that just as Genesis 1-1 reads, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That the only logical conclusion that we can come to is that our universe was created and that it was created by our eternal God because every creation must have a creator and something cannot come from nothing. In 1995, an astronomer with NASA by the name of John O'Keefe, he made the statement, we are, by astronomical standards, a pampered, cosseted, cherished group of creatures. If the universe had not been made with the most exacting precision, we could never have come into existence. It is my view that these circumstances indicate the universe was created for man to live in. Now, while there are many scientists who are willing to hold to false theories about the existence of God, about the origin of our universe, about mankind, we see that there are also many scientists who are willing to see that this cosmological argument is indeed true. In fact, if you consider things such as the days of creation, um, there, there's a book that was written several years ago entitled In Six Days. And in this book, there are 50 different scientists who give testimonies and give evidence to support their belief in creation. Now, these 50 scientists, each with various degrees in the scientific field, have discovered the hand of God in all that they do. They profess their belief in the literal six days of creation as stated in the book of Genesis. And each of these scientists offer arguments from their own particular field of study to show why they believe in God Almighty and why they believe that he is the creator of us all. Now there is so much detail that we could go into in regard to this first argument, this cosmological argument. But I think that we've seen the basics behind this argument which I believe offers strong proof for the existence of God. Now the second argument is known as the teleological argument and it states that every design must have a designer. And if, a, if design is found in nature, then there must have been someone or something that designed it. For example, a laptop computer did not just magically appear on my desk one day. No one exploded some plastic and other materials and a computer just magically appeared. Now, instead, much research and design made this computer that I'm using possible. And while it's an amazing piece of equipment, its complexity fails in comparison to the complexity and the precision of our universe and even the human body. There's so much information that we could look at with both of these ideas, but we really don't have the time to go as in-depth 
into these lessons as I would really like for us to. And these are certainly concepts that we will be studying more in depth in our Wednesday night Bible class at Pyburn Street dealing with Christian evidences. But for the time that we have for this lesson, I want us to take a look at some of the details about the design of our universe. You know, our universe operates in accordance with scientific laws. The precision of our universe allows us to know how to launch a rocket that could land within a few feet of a certain target on the moon or on any of the planets. It also allows us to predict when solar and lunar eclipses are going to take place, when things such as uh, comets and asteroids and meteorites are going to be able to be seen from the Earth. We think even about the sheer size of our universe, and it's truly mind-boggling. While its outer limits have never been able to be measured, the best estimate we have is that it is about 20 billion light years in diameter, containing an estimated 1 billion galaxies and somewhere around, se uh, around 25 sextillion stars. A sextillion is a 1 followed by 21 zeros. Just remember that while we can only guess at the number of stars, we learn that God knows every one of them. In fact, he knows them all by name. Psalm 147 and verse 4 says he counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Also, David said in Psalm 19 and verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. The writer of Hebrews also said in Hebrews 3, verses 3 and 4, For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Now friends, as impressive as the universe is, the Creator, which is God Almighty, has more honor and is more majestic than his creation. And while the size of our universe is truly impressive, its precise design is even more impressive. For example, in our galaxy, the sun functions like a giant nuclear engine. It gives off more energy in one second than what mankind has produced since the beginning of creation. Our sun produces intense radiation that is deadly to living things. However, the earth is located at the perfect distance from the sun so that it receives the proper amount of heat and radiation to sustain life. This earth was designed with an ozone layer which helps filter out additional harmful radiation from the sun. So since we are 93 million miles from the sun, we find that we are spared from the destructive pressure waves from the sun as it converts matter into energy. And science tells us that if the earth were even 10% closer to the sun, or 10% farther away from the sun, that it would spell doom for life on this earth. Another potential hazard that we avoid from the sun is some invisible winds that contain electrical power, protons and neutrons, and these winds hit the earth at high speed. But God has designed the earth like a giant magnet that pushes away the majority of these solar winds and sends them back out into outer space. And even the speed at which our planet rotates is a design. Because if it rotated faster, then fierce cyclones would continuously be forming all over the face of the earth. If the earth rotated a lot slower, the days and the nights would go from extreme heat to extreme cold. Now the earth's orbit is not a perfect circle. It is elliptical. This means that the Earth is closer to the Sun uh, at some times and further away at other times. When it's closer, the Earth speeds up to avoid being pulled into the Sun. 
And when it's farther away, it slows down to remain in the perfect position that it needs to be in, in order for life to be sustained. The Earth moves in an orbit around the Sun, but it departs from a straight line by a ninth of an inch every 18 miles. And if it departed by an eighth of an inch, then we would get too close to the sun and we would be incinerated. If it departed one-tenth of an inch away from the sun, then we would freeze to death. Well, we also know that the earth is tilted at exactly 23.5 degrees. If it were not tilted, then there would be no seasons. The tropics would be hotter, the deserts would be bigger, and if the tilt were changed to an exact 90 degrees, then much of the earth would experience extremely hot summers and extremely cold winters. But again, it doesn't function this way. Everything is just right. Everything functions in the way that is required to sustain life on this earth. We think about the moon for just a moment. The moon is 240,000 miles from the earth, but it too is in just the right spot to control the movement of the ocean's tides, to keep the life in the ocean alive. If the moon was closer to the earth by one-fifth, it would cause the tide to be enormous. It would reach 30 to 50 feet high over much of the Earth's surface twice a day. But folks, we have just barely scratched the surface of how precise our universe is. But as we've taken this brief look at our sun, the Earth, the moon, the stars, the evidence that it was designed is overwhelming. The idea that the things I've mentioned so far just happened by chance is really just a pipe dream for those who refuse to believe that God created all that we see and hear. And now we're going to continue to look at some more evidence for the existence of God in some future lessons, but in our concluding moments today, I want to share some additional passages of Scripture with you, and I alluded to the beginning verse in Psalm 19, but I want to share just a few other verses with you from this passage from the psalmist David. The heavens declare the glory of God, meaning the sky, the universe. We look into the stars, we look into the sky, and it is a testament to the existence of God. I think of a quote from Johannes Kepler, who was the scientist that discovered the, the, the planetary motion. And he talked about how, based upon his observances, it led him to wanting to praise God for his creation. But it's not just the universe that declares the glory of God. For David then goes on to say, And the firmament, meaning this world, this earth, the firmament showeth his handiwork. Much of the things that we've looked at in our lesson today in regard to the exact positioning, the exact functioning of the earth, is a powerful testament that only God, only a supreme intelligent being, could create this world in such a way. It could not possibly have happened by accident. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Meaning, at every time and everywhere that you look, you can see this world testifying of its creator. In fact, in Psalm 148, it talks about how all of God's creation has the ability to send forth the praises of God. And so all of God's creation has the ability to testify to their creator, to praise God. We see this during the day. We see this during the night. We talked about the sun. We talked about the moon and the stars and the things that it says to us. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run 
a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Now here is what I want to leave you with today. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, meaning you can trust what God's Word says. You can trust the testimony of His creation, and it will make wise the simple. Friends, I hope that you will give serious thought to the things that we've discussed today and that you will continue to join us as we look at these lessons dealing with the existence of God. We thank you for your time and for your attention, and we pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.